Before this week's episode, a quick update on Doug's run for U.S. Congress. Doug won his primary with over 70% of the vote, and now he is asking for the support of the Monero community to win the general election in November. Please join us for a special edition of Crypto Scramble to support Doug. Crypto Scramble is back. Join me for a very special fundraiser episode where you have a shot at winning a huge Monero prize while simultaneously supporting me on my run for U.S. Congress. Team Tumen just won the New York Congressional Primary in the 4th District with over 70% of the vote. That's why today I'm asking you, the crypto community, for your support so we have a real shot at winning the general election this November and putting a true crypto congressman in office. Crypto Scramble is a fast-paced, action-packed crypto quiz game show. It is a game of crypto knowledge and wallet using speed. Answer all the multiple choice questions correctly to reveal the Monero seed and be the first to unlock the Monero prize wallet before somebody else does. To participate, email us at contact at douglastuman.com and tell us how you would like to donate the $25 to play. We accept donations in Venmo, PayPal, credit card, and of course, cryptocurrency. Monero, always preferred. A win for Team Tumen is a win for liberty, cryptocurrency, and America. This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero safely on your iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source, and you always control your own keys and seed. And by XMR.to. Anonymously exchange your Monero into Bitcoin and seamlessly send Monero to any Bitcoin address. Go to XMR.to or use it right in your Cake Wallet. Cake Wallet and XMR.to are trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tuman interviews Joel Gugger, a security engineer researching Monero atomic swaps. Doug and Joel discuss the recent CCS research proposal and how they were able to prove that it is possible to implement and replace the current zero-knowledge proof mentioned in our last interview at the 36C3 with the new and more efficient cryptographic primitive, all while still achieving the same goal of trustlessly and anonymously converting Monero to Bitcoin and vice versa. They also chat about the critical steps and what needs to be done moving forward to help bring the project to fruition. Monero Talk starts now. All right. Joel, thanks for coming on again. Thanks for hosting me. Of course. So uh, last time we spoke, uh, the world was uh, a different place. And I think it was only, what, that was in December, right? Yeah, right. Right before Christmas. You were at 36C3. Exactly. Um, and things are, are a lot different right now in the, in the non-crypto world. But uh, I guess since then, you've had your head down in the crypto world itself, right? Uh, continuing to work on your project that we, we spoke about last time? Exactly. Yeah, about uh, atomic swaps. Atomic swaps. So, um, you know, this is something that I'm very excited about. I think most of the Monero community is excited about. It's kind of like the, the missing link here, uh, you know, a seamless way of connecting uh, Monero to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin being the chain that has the, obviously the largest network effect and the largest value, but mm. Monero being the chain that's actually living up to those cypherpunk principles and actually being uh, anonymous cash. Uh, and potentially, if we could somehow bring those two together, so bring in the liquidity of Bitcoin and do it in a way where we can uh, trustlessly um, connect to Monero, it would it would be it would be amazing. Yeah. So atomic swaps is kind of the promise of that. Is that is that correct? Is that a kind of a good way of summing it up? Yeah, exactly. Uh, atomic swaps are the promise of um, allowing people to trade without any third party or without uh, having to lock collaterals. Um, I mean, the, 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 the atomic swaps we are working on are atomic swaps that are not baked by a collateral. So yeah, it's, it's the promise of uh, no third party, direct peer-to-peer uh, 
trade uh, without trusting anybody. And so I think, you know, you've been working on this for quite some time. I know a lot of people have talked about it. Uh, when we spoke a few months ago, it was still, I kind of feel like in the theoretical stage yeah. where you guys think you had figured out a path towards doing it. And uh, part, I think one of the big missing links was this need for a zero knowledge proof to essentially make it truly trustless. Um, where do we currently stand? Is that still the, the model and that you're going after and ha has headway been made there? Has there been progress? So, yeah. Um, the, the state was to being totally trustless, uh, a, a generic zero knowledge proof was needed. Um, a hash prey image zero knowledge proof. So that's something that is theoretically possible but uh, practically, it's, it's not really used because it's very difficult and it's, um, yeah, it, it's, it's not something you can easily use and, and you can, it, it's not the, the best for simplifying the protocol. So what we, what we have done since December is try to replace that part with other crypto primitives. And, um, uh, some months ago, I, I asked uh, the Monero community uh, with uh, a crowdfunding, the, the CCS, uh, I asked for uh, some, some funding for doing research. And um, I did that because new crypto primitives, I, I, I learned new crypto primitives that uh, allowed us to reply, replace that zero knowledge proof. So. We replace the, the generic zero knowledge proof by another zero knowledge proof, but it's a more sim simple, simple uh, zero knowledge proof. So um, we achieve, like the protocol is basically the same as we presented uh, at, at 3063, but with other crypto primitives. So the concept is, is the same. Mm. So it is still relying on the zero knowledge proof, right? That's still a, a yeah, a but a different one, and one yeah. that is uh, implementable today. Okay. So in fact, the the zero knowledge proof has been discussed by uh, first by Andy Toshi on IRC, and um, uh, then Sarang uh, from the Monero Research Lab uh, wrote a technical notes. It's the Monero Research Lab uh, 10 paper. Um, and um, he also did a Python proof of concept implementation. Uh, so it's, it's something that is new, but something that is implementable and we can, we can analyze it. Like it, it's, not a, it's not a unicorn like a hash prey image, zero knowledge proofs. And that's that's the first new primitives that allows us to to do the the protocol today to implement the protocol today, and the second one is um, an adaptation of adapter signatures, but for ECDSA. And another paper came a bit before December last year, uh, but I wasn't aware of it, and it's called. Um, one-time uh, VES for verifiably encrypted signature, AKA adapter signatures. And the paper described uh, what an adapter signature is for Schnorr and for ECDSA. So adapter signature for Schnorr was something uh, we, we already used on in some protocols, uh, but adapter signature for ECDSA is something a bit new. So with these two new primitives, we replaced the generic hash prey image zero knowledge proof. Mm -hmm. So the the funding request that you guys made, what, what did that? Uh, what was the the full intent of that of that? The full intent of the scope there. What, what were you guys trying to achieve? So before uh, before doing the CCS. Uh, on IRC, I saw those two primitives and I was like, oh, maybe I can combine them to replace uh, the problem we have mm -hmm. in the protocol. 
So I proposed the CCS to, to fund uh, one week uh, of research in my company so I can work uh, full time during one week and try to understand correctly those primitives and adapt the protocol. And uh, at the beginning, I wasn't sure if the protocol would be uh, uh, changed a lot or, or not with those two primitives. Uh, so I, I asked for, for the funding to, to research and update the paper. So the result of the research are, it is possible to, to replace the, the old ZKP with the, the two primitives and, and it's, it's, uh, it's implementable today. It's a lot of work, but, but it is, it is possible. So, so very so, good results. Very good. I'm happy with the results. Now it seems like all the groundwork has been laid and there's a clear path towards actually, uh, implementing this idea and bringing it to fruition. Uh, theoretically, we know it can be done. All the pieces are that all the cryptography theoretically exists for it to happen. Uh, but now, so what is the next step? Is it still have to be, uh, explain this to, to the layman. Yeah. Uh, where, where are we at? Are we, are we at the coding stage where we can start, um, you know, building a, a prototype or are we still in the, the mapping things out stage? So we are not yet at the coding state, but um, I, I will talk about it later, but I, I want to, to end up in the coded st coding state as soon as possible. But um, for, for now, uh, the paper has been reviewed, rewrote with the primitives, and I posted it on the Monero Research Lab to have some more A's on it. Uh, Sarang uh, already started to, to uh, give feedbacks. So right now in the following week or two weeks, I would um, uh, publish the results of the research, uh, make sure that other people read the paper and, and if, if nobody sees a big flows, um, I, will, um, I will start another uh, CCS and uh, uh, create a team to work on, on an implementation and, and then like, start coding. But um, yeah, doing an implementation will require uh, some, some steps. Like it's, it's a very big project because uh, first to be uh, usable and integrable on uh, services or exchanges or whatnot, uh, we have to formalize a bit the, the protocol, the, the communication, the messages, and, and uh, not from, from a, a theoretical paper that, that explain how the math works, uh, do a technical, um, uh, uh, how, how to say that, like do the blueprints of, of the, the technical project. And um, then we will have to, to work on some libraries because as I mentioned, um, the, um, the zero knowledge proof uh, um, Sarang worked uh, on is, is done on, uh, in Python and it's a prototype. So we have to create a library that is ready to use in, uh, in real world. Um, we will have to make sure that all the crypto we use have uh, good libraries, for example, with the ECDSA adapter signatures. Um, and then we will have to start coding the, um, the, the, swap, uh, the swap daemon or the swap client. So it's a, it's a lot of, uh, of steps to end up with a ready to use a swap client. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then even when that, that swap climb, uh, client uh, exists, it's going to be very rudimentary in form, right? It's not going to be, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be for, for, for higher level users that are, that yeah. are comfortable. Right, it's that, that, that's 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 the next problem. Like um, having a, a swap client, um, if it's command line or if it has a web interface or or, or whatnot, um, like 
the the UI UX of that client will will make a huge difference about how how easy to use and and and, and whatnot. But the other big problem is if it's a peer to peer uh, a, a way of of swapping peer to peer, uh, how do how do people know uh, that they can trade with uh, with each other? Like um, you you have to to find platforms for uh, posting offers or, or demands. And um, so that when you have a client that is working and has a good UI, UX, easy to use and, and stable, uh, then you have to integrate with uh, services, exchanges, uh, decentralized exchanges can, can use it. Uh, maybe BISC can, can try to integrate it. Um, so yeah, that that's the. I imagine something like uh, like a local Monero, right? Would be or yeah, local Monero. Right, too. So it would be an option. So you know, people that that are both capable and willing to use the atomic swaps. Um, all all interesting things and very exciting. So are you seeing? Are you feeling a lot of excitement from the Monero community? I mean. Like I said, I, I'm, I, I know I have to imagine most people are very thrilled by this and I feel like it's becoming less uh, theoretical and a lot more uh, realistic at this point. Uh, are you getting good feedback from the community? Was, are you? Yeah, um, but I, I'm getting two, feed, two, two kind of feedbacks and both um, I, 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 I understand both views. Uh, the first view is uh, people that are very exciting about uh, having those swaps. And the second one is more uh, skeptic about, um, skeptic, skeptic about the possible market of, uh, because Bitcoin is not a private coin. So it's, you can trace Bitcoin. And who wants to sell Monero for Bitcoin and have maybe tainted Bitcoin or, 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 or so some, some people in the community, uh, don't really see the, um, the markets for, for, for like, or, or they can, they can see it for only people who has dirty Bitcoin and want to convert it. And right. I'm sure that people like that exist. Like uh, I'm aware that uh, it's a possibility, but I also believe uh, uh, in the existence of a market swap with or without KYC, maybe both uh, between Bitcoin and Monero through only uh, uh, people or people and services. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, for example, I can imagine services that will accept Bitcoin and maybe audit the Bitcoin before accepting them so they don't become a laundry machine, a laundry money machine. Um, what are you saying? They would what the Bitcoin? They would... Uh, for, for example, I can see services that will um, be one party uh, in the atomic swap and right. will be the party that accept the Bitcoin and give the Monero, uh, but they they audit the potentially audit. yeah audit the potentially uh, uh, the potential Bitcoin uh, before uh, going through the swap, mm. so they can with or without KYC. Uh, but so they can like be uh, uh, compliant with, for example, regulators. Yeah, so I, I see very many many possibilities. So I, I see many types of markets, and I believe that there there, there is markets that that will make good use of these atomic swaps between mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Monero and Bitcoin, despite the fact that Bitcoin is uh, traceable. And uh, you can have tainted Bitcoin, right? Um, all proving the the value of Monero, right? And uh, I think exactly the market will start to realize this. So, are I don't follow that too closely. Are you following that on like Bisc and uh, things like 
local Monero? Is there this this problem in the marketplace where you know people just are really not willing to? Are we seeing a higher price for for Bitcoin there? Actually, our, I, I I don't know enough to 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 our say lower that. price is, is Bitcoin valued lower because you would think it would be almost valued lower, right? Because here are potentially that's a possibility coins that are that are being laundered here. Yeah, that, that that's a possibility. Uh, I, I I didn't study BISC a lot, and I'm not um, uh, very familiar with local Monero, but. What I know is there there are trades on BISC. So mm -hmm. there are people willing to exchange Monero for Bitcoin. Um, the the price and the trades are are public, so we can we can see if bitcoins are sold for a lower price. But uh, I, I didn't check that. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I'm thinking about it because uh, if uh, or or when the the Monero Atomic swap becomes a reality. Uh, we will have to to use it and integrate it. So I'm I'm thinking about it because of that. But otherwise, I'm more excited with the technology and building it. So I'm not. Uh, I can't say that I'm not a market guy that will uh, right. closely look at the price. And uh, I'm interested in the economics and and how the how it can be used. Mm -hmm. but, uh, mm -hmm. I might not be the the best guy to to talk about it. All right. So, um, what what are the the critical next steps then at the at this point? What are... so critical next next step is um, having a good uh, good A's on the paper. Uh, I would say peer review, but it's not really a peer review, but having many people and good people uh, looking at the paper so we can be more confident that the protocol is flawless or or at least we didn't see any flow. Um, would you potentially get it audited? Or is, is essentially, is that what you're doing? It's just not an official it, I think it, it will not, not be official, but uh, what I want to do is publish it on, on um, the good places, for example, the Monero Research Lab and maybe other IRC channel where uh, people might be interested to have a look and, uh, and people uh, are, have, have very good knowledge and can catch some uh, mistakes. I'm pretty confident in the protocol because it's, it, it looks like uh, very close to other types of protocols. So uh, I'm very confident, but more A's is always better. Um, so that's one first critical uh, step. And uh, the other one would um, be able to found the, the team who, who would uh, develop the, the client. Mm -hmm. Um, do, you, do you know people that might be interested in developing the client? Is that a... No, just... I am interested. <laughs> <laughs> I am totally interested. And uh, uh, people I'm working with are uh, potentially interested. And uh, depending of the, on, on the timelines and the size of the project, we, we might try to hire people. And uh, in that case... Um, Maybe we can ask on, on Monero devs if some Monero guys are uh, willing to, to contribute or to work uh, on the project and, and mm -hmm. yeah. Tell, tell us your background again, like what, what other projects you've worked on like in your, in your okay. daily life. Um, in the past years, I've mostly worked on, on Bitcoin. Uh, I've worked on pay, payment channels uh, on Bitcoin. Um, I've I've also worked on payment channel for Ethereum. It was more um, uh, theoric. Uh, the the payment channel on Bitcoin was uh, theoric and practical. We we started an implementation, um, and um, yeah, I, I mostly focused on on payment channel and. Uh, 
and other type of swaps. But that's that's what I did. And and also for for starting with Monero, I started the, the Rust library, the Monero Rust library, to get uh, get a very good understanding on how Monero works. Um, and I'm maintaining the the library. And uh, in the future, I want to uh, increase my commitment on the library to to add new features, not just maintain the the current state of the library, but add new features. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you? Um, and then how did you? So you worked on a theory. What was your reasoning for working on the uh, like Ethereum projects and things like that? Was it just an interest in in payment channels or how? How did you become like the, the yeah. payment channel guy? Um, we had, in, it was in my previous company, we had interest in payment channel for a special type of projects, financial mm -hmm. product, projects. And um, we, we started the work on, with Bitcoin because at the beginning we all started with Bitcoin um, and uh, it, was, it was good, it covers uh, it covered like maybe 95% of what we needed for the payment channels to create the financial services uh, on top of it. But we realized that uh, there, there are some limitations uh, compared to, to Ethereum and the smart contract uh, capabilities. So we also started developing the same kind of payment channel on Ethereum uh, with the 5% uh, we missed for, for, for Bitcoin. So that, mm -hmm. that's how uh, I started working with Ethereum. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm, I'm not doing uh, uh, Ethereum work uh, right now. It was in the previous context. What's your, what's your current take on, on the crypto sphere here? What's your take on the technologies and you know, where, you know, where things are currently at? Um, are you... Uh, what what are you most excited about? Are you excited about Monero? Are you excited about Bitcoin? Um, For sure, both. <laughs> no, there is there is very very cool projects in both sides. Um, I, I mean, uh, the the all the crypto and the ring signatures uh, on on Monero with uh, the work done by uh, Sarang and the Monero Research Lab is is really really interesting and, and really good. So I'm very interested. There is also this uh, Bulletproof Plus around uh, these days. Um, the paper is really new, but uh, there is already a team that is uh, um, proposing to implement it. So that's a cool, cool new crypto improvements on, on, the, on the Bulletproof part. So that, that's very interesting. And on the Bitcoin part, it's more uh, mid long term. Uh, with um, potentially Schnorr and Taproot and uh, all these new uh, cool technologies. And uh, in fact, this would uh, also help simplifying a bit the current protocol and makes it uh, less trustable or le like to make it strong against, uh, stronger against chain analysis where you can see that those Bitcoin have been potentially swapped. You mm -hmm. don't know which, which, uh, for, for which crypto or with who, but you might detect that a swap may occur here. And mm -hmm. with a new, new, uh, this new development, uh, for, uh, Schnorr and Taproot, this might disappear. Uh, mm -hmm. Because we we can encapsulate everything on the on the signature, and not relying on uh, scripts, on Bitcoin scripts. Mm. So what, what what do you what do you envision the future looking like in terms of Bitcoin and Monero? Um, do you do you think Monero will always kind of play that role of being the anonymous cash? Um, how, how do you see them working together or what, what do you see as being kind of the future uh, in terms of Bitcoin and Monero? Uh, for sure, Monero will be uh, 
the or one of the best uh, digital cash, anonymous digital cash or private digital cash. And uh, that, that's great. Uh, I can see Mimble, Wimble and, and for example, Green um, also like this. But um, yeah, I think Monero plays a, a very important role and will will stay in that role for, for a long time. And uh, Bitcoin is something else. Like we, we, I think we need both and they play different roles. Um, and they also have different philosophy. And I think that's, that's okay. They can coexist. Mm -hmm. What, what is your, uh, what is your reasoning for supporting something like, uh, the Monero project? I mean, wh why are you interested in this concept of, of digital cash? What I know it's, it's, you know, mm. it's, I, I know it's a very obvious answer for me, but I'm, I'm curious, you know, what, what, what do you think in your mind? Like why, why are you, why are you even working on Monero right now? Why, why is digital cash important to you? Because it is digital cash first. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, for, for, for what it is, I think it's important. We need it. Um, uh, yeah, Bit Bitcoin is not perfect. Monero is not perfect, but uh i can i can see the the again the the, the very important role of uh, of uh, private digital cash and that's what monero is for me um but i also interested in monero because of the tech and the community that's also something that uh, that makes me interested in the tech and and the community itself, yeah, exactly, yeah. And uh, and so you you got you got into Monero, I guess was it through attending the um, the conferences, the, the like the one you, the thirty six C three is that how it? No, it started with the thirty four C three. I I at, at that time I was working on on a payment channel, Bitcoin payment channel, mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, the, the Bitcoin tables were near the Monero tables and, uh, uh, my colleagues, one of my colleagues, uh, already knew well about Monero. And even before the conference, he, he mentioned to me many times, you have to look at Monero. You will like it. It's, uh, it's really good. The people are smart and, and, uh, the, good community and i was like yeah, yeah yeah when i have time i will have a look and and at 34 c3 um with the table uh beside we started talking with the monero guys and we started talking about atomic swap because it wasn't something uh researched or at least not a lot at, at the moment at that moment so we, we started talking about atomic swap, uh, yeah, two and a half year ago. Mm. And that's how I started, uh, uh, looking at Monero. I mean, it really, it really highlights and shows you the importance of these conferences, you know, which unfortunately, uh, they're not happening at all anywhere right now, you know, but, uh, yeah. I think that there really is a, a real world factor there. You know, obviously everybody here is working online. Um, you know, I mean, Bitcoin started with uh, people working anonymously together through the internet, but there's certainly, I guess, I guess something to be said about, you know, uh, meeting like-minded people in, in reality, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's good for networking. It's good for sharing. Uh, it's, it's something that is needed in, in, the, in the field. Yeah, sure. All right. Well, thanks for coming on. Thank, thanks for the update. Very excited. Um, I, I know I asked you this last time. It's obviously it's a tough question. You don't have to answer if you don't want to. But what, when do you think we will we will be you know atomic swapping together? When is uh, when, when when will it become a reality? When will you know somebody be going on uh, local Monero or a Cake Wallet and you know 
uh, soon. anonymously swapping <laughs> between Bitcoin and Monero. Soon, soon is the answer, soon. right? Soon. <laughs> <Leave it at. laughs> yeah, let's say soon. <laughs> Some, sometime this decade. Well, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, no, I know it's, it's it a very depends on too many factors, but uh, as soon as possible. Uh, okay. <laughs> all right. We just want results here. We just want results. Now, I, you know, I appreciate all your hard work. I, I couldn't even imagine, you know, the things that it's amazing that you have brought it as far as you have since we last spoke. Uh, it's It's encouraging to see that you're, continuing to work on it and that the community, uh, the Monero Research Lab and everybody's coming to to yeah. support you and help you along the way. Um, and, you know, that's that's where the real value is in 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 these cryptos is the people that are working. Like you said, the smart, you know, you you met the Monero people. You're like, wow, smart group of people. That's yeah. that that's the real value here. Um, you know, the technology is is only as good as the, you know, the people behind it that are constantly uh, building it and upgrading it. So, yeah, exactly. And I, I really want to 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 thanks uh, the Monero Research Lab and, and Sarang for for their help and and uh, the, the yeah, all the feedbacks they they are providing. So it, it's really, really important for for all the, the whole community. So and it helps people to to bring new ideas and to start working on, on cool projects like the, those atomic swaps. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's really important. And I'm really, uh, yeah. Where can people watching this learn more about you and kind of follow follow the project as it, as it proceeds? So uh, I think I will post uh, the result of the research on, on Reddit. Um, and um, uh, maybe we can put the link in the description when the the talk yep. is published. So I think that's the best uh, because I, I will link to all the all the, the the paper and all the resources that are uh, that have been worked during this research. So I think uh, we can put we can put a Reddit link. Yeah. And you think you'll you'll be posting a new funding request soon, or only after you do this kind of uh, audit, uh, so to speak, with the Monero Research Lab? I think I will I will post uh, the the a new CCS soon. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, yeah. So All people right. can can start uh, having a look at it, and we can start discussing and and find the people who want to work on it. So yeah, uh, soon I will post the, the new CCS. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming on and uh, looking forward to the next update. Yeah, thank you again for hosting me. All right. Have a good one. Bye. Ciao. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you have an Alexa device, you can tell it to listen to the latest episode of the Monero Talk podcast. Go to monerotalk.live slash subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we're always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.